Hi, my name is Kelly Lee Myers. I'm the visual effects lead artist for Welcome to the Cosmos, an ish media production directed by Nick Hallam out of Australia. I'm here today in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I'm going to walk you through what it takes to composite a shot for Welcome to the Cosmos. And right now I'm going to start with my handy dandy compositing system known as Fusion, uh, specifically Fusion 5.3. Uh, in 64-bit. This is a compositing package that uh, we've used on several different shows including uh, Battlestar Galactica, Welcome to uh, the Cosmos of course, and a few other sci-fi channel and sci-fi network productions. It has a long history, uh, just recently celebrated its 20th year of being one of the world's leading compositing packages. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by compositing a shot and we're going to go right into compositing an effect shot known as FX16 and here's a revision version 6. Inside of this directory in front of me here I've got several different passes that make up the shot as it's broken out from our 3D program known as Lightwave 3D and inside of these folders are the resulting images. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the patrol ship. If you've been on the website you've seen this ship before. We're going to start with the key light pass and we're going to load it up. The file format that we're using is EXR format. EXR format is uh, an open standard. It was originally developed by Industrial Light and Magic for Star Wars Episode 2 and it has some very very handy dandy features which I'll demonstrate now. So let's go and load this patrol ship key pass and it's loaded. We're going to drag it into the view here. Now we're not going to see anything right now because at this particular point in time in the animation the ship is off screen. I'm just scrub forward into the timeline bar a little bit and now we can actually see what this key light pass is. Now EXR format as an image saver has the ability to store several different types of buffers from the Lightwave rendering engine inside of it internally. Think of these as different layers kind of like in a Photoshop file. One of the layers is the RGBA pass or layer uh, but more specifically what I'm after are the different types of properties that the light will kick off of the surfaces in the rendering engine. I'll demonstrate this now by changing the buffer to the diffuse RGB values and you can see that it's now only just displaying the diffuse properties of that light and the surfaces as it's kicked back. I'm going to copy this, so I'm going to change this to specularity, so spec red, spec green, spec B, which is blue, and you'll see that I now only have the specular information in the image for me to work with. Now I'm going to blend these two together using a merge tool and we're going to just screen them over top so that we can see them together. Very very similar in the result to what is in the RGB pass. Let's just change this back. Very very similar. But the reason why we split this stuff out is so that I can have independent color correction and glow tool control, uh, among other things, individually. So I can further adjust the image. Now I'll just get rid of this loader here and we'll continue working on. Generally what I do with a composite like this is that each ship or each separate layer that I want to modify and adjust independently will have these buffers separated out and then merged together. I'm going to add a brightness contrast tool. I'll demonstrate how we can start tweaking the values of color, gain, and contrast. I don't fill too much with the contrast in this type of pass, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. However, in the specularity pass, or layer, it becomes very important how you can tweak those values and levels. That's a little bit more like it. Now, one of the other passes that I'm going to need here to start building this shot up is the radiosity pass for the patrol ship. The radiosity pass is basically uh, kind of like a light box that would be surrounding the entire craft and provide illumination in all directions. Now it's more accurately described as a sphere and then that sphere points light rays in towards the object. And of course, wherever the object occludes another portion of the object, you'll have shadowing or occlusion. 
when I do this composites, I generally mix together the diffuse pass or layer, but in this case it is a pass because it was rendered out completely separate from any of the other lights, together with the diffuse of the key light. So you can see the results there. Now, in this particular shot, we have some light coming back from the earth, which isn't totally in here just yet. We're not going to worry too much about that until I actually composite it in and then start doing some level matching. But we want to boost this gain a little bit just so we can you know, fill it in a little. We can get really dramatic or we can turn it right down. In general, I just want to give it a little bit of a touch so it's got a little bit of a hit. So right now on the left are these tools combined and then visible on the left side of the screen and these tools here plus this merge which will take it all together over here. Now on Battlestar Galactic and other shows uh, such as Stargate we generally would have a glow tool stuffed in between the brightness contrast tool for the specularity. That gives it that little highlight boost and it gives it that nice soft glow giving it a very very spacey look and it also adds to the photographic um, impression. But in these flows I'm changing things up a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm actually going to put this ahead of the flow or after the flow merge tools so that everything is kind of getting a little bit of a boost. Now that I've done that all of this is kind of being given this glow effect and as a result, it's going to boost all of these other different levels that are in here, specifically the radiosity pass. I'm going to just knock that back a little bit, and we'll see the results of it. I'll just show this on black about the alpha channel, and that'll give us a better idea. So I'm going to just tap the gain down a little bit. Uh, it's looking pretty nice. All right, next step. So this ship has some running lights. You know, running lights being if you were working on uh, uh, a starship or a uh, big space station or something like that. Those are all the lights that would be on on the space station or in your craft and, uh, going out the windows. Specifically with the patrol ship, the patrol ship has these running lights that are sets of lights that are on the tops of the wings or underneath. In this particular shot, we can't really see them, but we put them in there anyways for effect. Let me see if we can find an angle that demonstrates that a little bit better. Not so much, but we're going to put it in there anyways. And we're also going to merge it immediately after, and we're going to allow that glow tool to work globally over top of everything. We're also going to probably put a little brightness contrast tool in there and give it a little bit more of a boost. So we can turn up the gain on it. Oops see that merge tool over on the left. We'll see the original uh, unaffected pass on the left and on the right. We'll drag in and put that glow tool back in. So there you have it. You can start to see that got these little finer details punching out and that adds to the realism of the shot. I'm just going to rearrange my flow a little bit here. Got to keep the flow clean so that you know if I'm the uh, compositor on this show I can understand it and the compositor might take it over can understand it. It's all about keeping things neat and tidy. Now what we're going to do really quickly is we're going to add the engines to the shot. Now in this particular breakout for the rendering I've included the engines completely on their own rendered and the effect of that is this blue kind of hue and flame going out the back. Now our director Nick uh, liked these engines, but he didn't like the color, and he wanted them to be more orangey, more oxygen based. What we'll do though, since I've already established this color correction in a previous shot, we'll go and open version 6 where we established it, and this flow will open up, and I'm going to go and fetch that color correction tool that Nick really, really likes. I'll give you a demonstration here. Here's the different engine passes that were broken out separately and independent so I could control them. So there they all three together. And then there's the interactive 
portion that will come up in a second here. You see the spill of the engines in the back of the ship and on the engine molding. And then there's this color corrector that goes in there. And just by using a color correction tool, I can completely change the look of those engines in terms of their color and how they interact with the rest of the ship. So we're going to pop that color corrector in just after. So now my engines are the color the Nick's like. And I can merge them over top right away. Throw the glow tool in there. And there we go. We have a scout ship for the most part. Next up, I'm just going to expand this flow out a little bit so you can see what we're doing. And I'm going to tidy up my flow a little bit more. Keep everything on the same lines. Just in case I have to jam a few more tools in there, tweak things a little bit further, that'll give me some space. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load our scout ship, Corel's scout ship, and we're going to start, let's start with the rad pass first. Now, even in this radiosity pass, and that I'm using just the RGB value results, I have had it in the saver to provide me with diffuse, diffuse green, diffuse blue, and this is the image result. Now this ship is pretty far away at this point so it's not going to look all that great but it's going at a pretty good clip and it's zooming by camera and it's doing its thing. So we're just going to back up in the animation here take a look at it. Okay we'll start from there. Alright once I've got that radiosity pass in I'm basically going to duplicate the flow that I did with the patrol ship need to load the scout ship pass in order to do that though. So again, I'm going to basically do the same thing with the flow for the patrol ship, but now with the scout ship. So this particular pass, the lighting on the key light, is not so dramatic, but we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to change this from RGBA to diffuse R, diffuse G, diffuse B, and we're going to start merging these tools together so that we can see the final results. I'm going to copy this because it's the same loader and I can just switch, and this is the beauty of EXR files, I can just switch the loader to say I only want to load the specular RGB values from that same file. That way I don't have to render out passes for uh, the effect of specularity for the light uh, in one pass and then render another pass and set it up for only diffuse. I can do that all in one chunk, at least for the key light. Generally, I break the shots out uh, quite significantly into radiosity, the key light pass, and of course, if we're dealing with the patrol ship, you get engines and all that merges together and starts to build into a final shot. Okay, let's continue on with the scout ship here. I'm just going to back up to where we were before. You can see how this part of the screen, which has the results of all these tools down below here, coming together. So that was basically one section of the shot that was all completely broken out independently of the patrol ship and the scout ship. So they're completely independent. That gives me completely independent control of all the different properties. And then I can merge them together. But you can see now that the patrol ship is now uh, screaming in, trying to chase after this little dot, which is the scout ship. So let's start uh, putting the rest of that together and we'll get a better idea of how this is all going to work. Once again, I'm going to merge these tools together. You can start to see how that light kicks in. It's very nice. I'm going to add a brightness contrast tool. I'm just going to pop the, the levels there a little bit. And we're going to add a brightness contrast tool to the radiosity pass as well. And this is going to allow me to boost these values. I'm just going to overdo it a little bit here just so you can see what I'm doing. And, of course, no ship is complete 
without some running lights. And we have the engine's Rad Pass running lights. We're going to go grab the running lights first. Now, again, from this particular angle, you're not going to see much of the running lights. We have to scan back a little bit. So let's scan back a little bit and find what we're looking for. Let's see. If we can find something that we can see. Not so much. So this pass isn't really useful, but we're going to put it in anyways, because there is a portion where it passes by camera and you can physically see it. In this particular pass, I'm not going to change the buffers, but they are there in case I need them. I just want the RGBA values. All right, we're going to merge this over top using the screen function in the merge tool screen. For those of you who have been using After Effects or uh, Nuke or Shake, very, very similar tools between all compositing packages. It all comes together more or less the same way. You just have to have a good idea about how you want to blend all of these things together. All right, so now that I've got that, last little pass for this ship is the engines. So let's go and load the engines. Throw in another merge tool there, and then we'll just blend it right over top. So now you can see little engines in there. So let's back this shot up, and we'll see those engines a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Okay, that's uh, pretty good. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this tool, select it, so that it's the tool in the chain that will get the glow, or pardon me, a merge tool. Uh, that will allow me to merge this group over top of this group. Now what I'm going to do though is I'm going to change how these effects are blended in terms of where they're layered, and we're going to apply normal. Normal is basically like taking a paper cutout and putting it directly over top of something else that's got a paper cutout and you get the two passes together. Let's uh, scan forward a little bit here. You'll see now we've got two ships in the shot. And we've got two ships in the shot with a glow tool on it. And that starts to come together very quickly. I'm just going to rearrange my flow a little bit here just to keep things tidy. Again, it's all about being able to figure out what some person has done so that you can replicate it or continue on with the work if you're working in a team environment. You have to treat it like an assembly line. All right, so now that these things are in here, we'll turn the alpha off so you can start to see what it looks like. I'm going to add a grain tool. We're not done yet. I'm going to put the earth in here, plus some stars, just a moment. But we're going to throw the grain tool in here, and we'll start to see that it adds a little bit of film grain in there. It gives it a little bit more of a photorealistic effect. And I'm working in proxy mode right now, so it's not the highest quality rendering, but we'll just turn ourselves into proxy mode, uh, turn it off, and we'll go into high quality mode, and the whole flow will re-render itself using the high quality settings for every single pass and every single loader, and the final results are a little bit cleaner. All right, one other tool that needs to go in there is a resize so that we're going to full 1080p. I'll just pop up a new window here and you can see it full screen. And we'll turn the alpha off so you can see it with the black background. So now you can start to see how things are coming together. Now some of the values in here are a little bit hot. I'll go in later and adjust some of this. I'm just going to scan back through this animation a little bit. Now keep in mind that I'm pulling this information uh, over a network so the rendering process is going to be a little slow. And we are working with uh, about 15 different layers of information. Now one of the beauties of EXR format is that if you're only using a particular loader with a particular set of buffers selected, it's only going to read and parse that information out of the file. It's not going to read this huge 16-bit or 32-bit floating point image for all those different buffers. There's a misconception out there that when you're working with EXR files that um, you're pulling 16, 17 megabytes per frame uh, on average uh, across if you want to uh, be working with a composite. This is not true. What's happening is is that the EXR file, when you're working with uh, this material, when you set the loader to use these particular buffers inside, you're getting just those buffers. It's not going to read anything else, and that keeps the speed up while you're working with these super high 
floating point color space images. All right, so now that that's all together, I'm going to get rid of this window temporarily. And I'm just going to back off for a bit. And we're going to go and load our stars just for fun. We'll do the stars first. And let's see what those stars look like on their own. Pretty cool. But we need a little bit of uh, help there for those stars. We're going to add a brightness contrast tool, and we're going to give them a little bit of a pop. Uh, that gives them the, the ability to pop out a little bit. And we're going to merge it afterwards from these two pieces. And when I say pieces, I mean this piece, which is the scout ship, and then this piece, which is the patrol ship. So we're going to merge it. And you're probably wondering, you know, how do I get one to flip over and go on top of the other? Well, it's a real easy way to do that. Set it to normal. Right. You can see, though, that I've got stars over top of my ships. The reason for that is that the compositing flow process in Fusion and many other uh, nodal compositing programs works by allowing you to put over or under uh, where the mix actually takes place. So I'm going to hit Control w which flips these flows merge tools, or just this merge tool in particular, and causes it to flip underneath. So now I've got a shot that's got on its own, without the Earth in there, some stars, two spaceships, but yet yeah, I have complete and independent control over all the different layers that are involved here. And we'll see it with the glow tool on there. Now we're looking pretty spacey. That's, that's some pretty good looking stuff. Let's uh, throw the green tool in there again, and it's starting to look very photographic. Now the last part that we need, of course, is the Earth, and it's pretty big in this shot. It took quite a while to render. Uh, here's the radiosity pass for it that gives it a little bit of fill. And again, it's a, a very global radiosity kind of effect. Now, I've done something a little bit goofy here. I should really just save myself the trouble and merge these things as one piece. Stars, space, background, planets. I like to categorize them and put them into their own world. Same problem I had before. Stars are over top of planet. And I need to switch this to normal and alpha. And we'll put the Earth over top. And so we just see stars down here in the background. And there's the planet itself. Now I've got to do something that's to this Earth to make it work the way I want it to work. I'm going to load the another merge tool in here. And I'm going to go and load the key pass. Oh, let's just not move my toolbar at the same time. All right, we're going to go and load. Um, this actually goes underneath here. I'll just do this for now. I'm going to go and load the key pass for the stars, or for the uh, the Earth. Here it is. And this is another example where I'm not going to use the buffers. I'm just going to merge it in right over top of this pass. So let's see this uh, left and right. Okay, so here's the key light pass, and you get the shadow. And down over here, you can see that New Zealand's got its lights on. All right, we're just starting to hit the lights on over here. That's what happens when you're looking at uh, the Earth. You see one part illuminated by the sun. And, of course, on the darker side, you've got cities that are turning their lights on. So, on the left, I've got the key uh, pass for the Earth, and on the right, I've got the radiosity pass. Now, I'm just going to need a little bit of a color corrector in there to turn that down, because it's not going to be that bright. It's going to be more something like this. You can still see the clouds, because there's still some atmospheric bounce going on. And we need it to punch out against the background. That's starting to look a little bit better. Alright, now let's see all those tools together. I'm just going to get rid of that merge tool that was stuck in there before. And it's going to render everything. Now we've got the glow tool contributing to the entire contents of the shot. Then we go and see the resize tool. And we throw the green in there. And let's take a look at this full screen for you. There you go, you got two ships, one chasing the other, uh, heading down and into 
the atmosphere over top of Australia and we can see our stars in the background we can see that New Zealand's got its lights on we've also got the coast here just about hitting the sunset the horizon there we can see this nice blue atmospheric haze and it looks pretty nice now that's all that's left is to punch in a saver and because I'm transferring this over the internet to Nick to review We're not going to render them out in full quality glory. Uh, we're just going to do it in JPEGs so that Nick can download them, load them into his application that he uses for reviewing the shots. So this is FX16. And create a new folder there. We're going to create a folder for the render. So it's FX16. Again, keeping myself organized. We'll call this an R01, even though it's probably pretty close to final, though I'm sure Nick is going to give me some notes. And we're going to pop it in there. Dot. I'll actually call this JPEGs underscore dot JPEG. And we'll see the saver results there. Make sure the compression is up there, but not totally at 100%. We want to save Nick some downloading time. And let's back out and review how this shot was put together. Starting from the beginning, on the left-hand side of the screen. We had uh, key pass with the diffuse properties. Then we had, of course, uh, radiosity pass. And we have our key pass with just the specularity, and we've got it boosted a little bit, and that contributes together for that look there. And then we have our running lights, which aren't so dramatic. Give them a little bit of a boost, merge those together. And then we've got our engines, the color corrector to make them all fancy, and that blends together. And now let's take a look at the scout ship. Let's back this up a little bit. Let's see that scout ship a little bit closer. Scout ship, the key light. Not going to notice much in that pass. Scout ship with the radiosity pass. A little bit of a boost. And mixed together with the specularity, which I've given a little bit of a boost. And. This is our running lights passed. Not much that you're going to be able to see there, at least in this particular shot. Then we've got our engines, and what I'm going to do here with the engines, I'm just going to really quickly tap another brightness contrast control tool in there. I'm just going to pop up the gain just slightly. And you can see my flow is cooking in the background there, and it's updating. All right, and then we're going to see those tools combined, so we've got these passes are now mixed. Let's actually just move this over a little bit so we're not jamming things together. And then we've got our stars. Boost them a little bit. And we've got our earth in there. And the earth, of course, is separated into radiosity. We knock the radiosity back, so we've just got a little bit of a fill in there. And we add that together. It's mixed. And mixed in with the stars. And then thrown in with all those passes together. So we've got all of our ships, all their wonderful effects work. Then glow tool, probably tap that back a little bit. It was just the default glow tool setting. And that's probably a little bit better. Then it gets resized. We throw the film grain over top of it just to make sure it looks a little bit more photographic. So while this film, uh, or this uh, TV show was shot on red, red actually does have a grain to it, so we're going to try to match that as closely as possible without overdoing it. Then we've got our saver. Now all I've got to do is save this. And of course this is FX16. And I've already saved a previous comp, so I'll just say this is a temporary version of that. Because I did a significant more work or amount of work on FX16 previously, so let's call this Alt. Alright, let's go open up the original version. Let's close that other comp down in the background, doesn't need to be there. So, back to shot FX16, and we'll go and we'll open up the original. Uh, no, don't want to load the autosave version. So, very, very similar setup, except I've just moved things around a little bit differently, but it's almost identical. 
the only change here that I've done is I've actually decided that you know, I haven't actually saved the version with the planets in there just yet. But we can do that by just going and copying this stuff out of here. So let's take this. Copy that, put it into the flow over here. Just as easy as that, moving tools around. Take this merge, redirect it to there, put it over here. And this is, you know, literally at frame one or two or three. That little scout ship's moving real quick. So let's go to frame six here. I think now we'll actually be able to see those running lights on that ship. And that pass uh, is. This is Scout Engines, Stars, where are those wonderful running lights? Scout Key, Scout Key, Scout Rad, Scout Running Lights. So there you can see those lights in there. I've given them a little bit of a boost. I don't want to over crank them too much because uh, they're going to start looking pretty chunky when we're moving this fast. All right, we can start to see how the shot comes together. Now that everything's in there and I've got my planet in there, let's go to uh, say frame 65. There you go. And that is pretty much a completed shot ready for Nick's notes and comments. Once I clean my flow up a little bit more, I'm going to save it again, and it can go off to the network for rendering, which will take about uh, five to ten minutes, if that. All right, so we're going to save this as a revision two. And there you go. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and we'll probably be doing one or two more of these little tutorials and demonstrations of how the visual effects for Welcome to the Cosmos were created. In the meantime, I'm Kelly Lee Myers. Take care.